Okay, YouTube. Take two. Um, hey, I've shown this a few times in my videos, and I've never had a Kleckite respond to this. Why does Jonathan Kleck have a demon on the back of his head and on his wall? Just saying. This is a video that I did, uh, one of them that I did that shows this, uh, Jonathan Kleck, Godmaker Doctrine Demolished by Dr. Walter Martin. Um, and it's talking here, it's showing him doing the Hoover Dam video, which turned out to be a false prophecy. Remember 11, 11, 11, that never happened? That makes him a false prophet according to the Bible. Why does none of the Kleckites ever address that? Because they look over a multitude of things that clearly point to the fact that he is a false prophet. Okay, that said, he's come out with another uh, video this morning, and <laughs> um, he's talking about a warning and an admonishment that the Lord's going to curse everybody that uh, mocks him or causes any kind of grief for Grand Junction. So he drags Cat on, and they have this long exchange. And basically, uh, he's saying the, Lord, the Lord's going to curse you. And then he breaks down crying. And uh, like he's so sad for you. But, um, you know, my take is, is that, um, you know, he, he's definitely fleecing the flock. And he's just making it up as it all goes along. So I just wanted to point that out to you you not to be afraid of them because scripture says you if a prophet prophesies something it doesn't happen he's a false prophet you don't have to be afraid of him it's crystal clear in the bible and if thou say in thine heart how shall we know the word which the lord hath not spoken when a prophet speaketh in the name of the lord if the thing follow not nor come to pass that is the thing which the lord hath not spoken but the prophet hath spoken it presumptuously thou shalt not be afraid of him Thou shalt not be afraid of him. Thou shalt not be afraid of him. So um, with that, we'll see how this uh, Grand Junction thing goes. I'm going to throw some clips in here of some things that should shake some people up. I mean, you know, his cargo container that he did, it's got a picture of Satan and or a demon right there on it in the flames. wondering, you know, why people um, are still watching. It blows me away. So with that, take a look at the stuff, share it, pass it around, everything's uh, Creative Commons. Feel free to use it. Expose them. Keep going, because the storm's coming. And he's promoting that we're all going to get out of here. Uh, before you know tribulation and stuff and um, my Bible says we're not going anywhere to the last day I mean, Martha addressed that with Jesus when Jesus was going to raise Lazarus and she, of course Martha didn't know it at the time but Jesus, Martha said hey yeah I know he's going to be raised at the last day and Jesus didn't correct her so Matthew 13 says that the tares are taken first, and then after that, then the wheat's gathered into the barns. The first ones taken are going to be the tares. That's just what the Bible says. So the book of John says the last day, the last day, the last day, several times. So, you know, you guys that are, you know, have your hopes on a preterm rapture, and you're not storing rice and beans and bullets, you better get with the program quick. Because, like I said, a storm's coming. We've got worldwide floods. Earthquakes are, matter of fact, what woke me up to do this video was an earthquake at three o'clock in the morning. 
I kid you not, earthquake. So, you got volcanoes popping, things are rocking and rolling. So you get real, wake up. Suppose these false teachers, support us if you can. Kind of makes me sick that uh, people can throw money at this guy for his uh, false teaching and you know building these satanic cargo containers and have devils dance around on the table inside of the same, which I'll, I'll show you a clip or two. And um, you know I've got kids up in the mountain that we got donations we got two months ago that I can't even get up there because I got a, a clutch in my truck blew up and um, you know. I don't have the money to fix that, so how can I get up the mountain to do that? That's, that's going to be interesting, trying to pull that. But yet this guy wears new clothes, living the best life now. <laughs> so I've got the you know, 3,200 subscribers is not setting the world on fire, but I mean, you know, maybe five get it. Maybe five get it. And throw us a fish and buy us a cup of coffee now and then and everything that they've given everything they've given I, it's gone to the kids not not any of it's gone to us okay but if it, you know somebody wants to help us fix our truck so we can get back in the feeding the kids ministry that that'd be appreciated that would help but uh, i'll throw some clips in here for you spread the word love you mean it if i can do anything for you let us know matthew chapter 15. Jesus said about these who taught other doctrines, right. let them alone. Now the philosophy today, maybe in a lot of Christian networks and organizations, Christian organizations is, hey, if that guy over there on that corner in that church is all the organizations that you've just mentioned plus others, is not teaching truth and we believe that they're not teaching truth, let them alone. God will deal with the tares simultaneously with the wheat at the time of the harvest. Their idea is, and I want you to, I, I need an answer to this, yep. is let's preach the gospel, which is the truth, and the preaching of the truth automatically counteract error, and we don't have to bother them, in the words of Jesus, let them alone, just preach the truth that'll counteract the error. Don't get involved with that. Look at your context of Matthew 15. He's not telling you to leave false teachers alone. There were people going around healing in his name, yes. using his name and right. so forth. Jesus said, if they're not against us, they're with us. Right. Leave them alone. But these people are against us. They've declared against us. So that position... The position then that I yeah. just mentioned yeah. of preach the truth, it'll automatically counteract error, leave the personalities and the names out, you don't agree with it. No, not only don't I agree with it, I don't know one major theologian in the history of the entire Christian church that will agree with it. I don't know one commentary that will exegete <clears throat> Matthew 15 to teach that. Now, if you really want to get technical on what the texts say, 47% of the New Testament, according to this, who's the greatest, one of the greatest living New Testament scholars, is apologetic, which means defending Christianity. Yes. If you could just turn the truth loose and let it do its job and not defend it, why do you have all the admonitions in the Scripture? Contend earnestly for the faith, once for all delivered unto the saints. For the time will come when men will not put up with sound doctrine. They shall gather to themselves teachers who will tickle their ears, and the truth of God will be turned into mythology. Reprove them, rebuke them, exhort them with patience and teaching. Where's the rebuke? Where's the reproof? Where's the exhortation? You see, the people who are telling us not to defend Christianity are the people incapable of doing it. Mm -hmm. And the danger, the danger is, not only are they are incapable of doing it, but they hinder those that are capable. Why don't we make a defense of the gospel in our day? And the reason is because we're afraid we're going to get people mad at us. They're not going to like us anymore. They're not going to support our work. And then we're going to get turned off. Maybe it's taken a while to get there because we're told to love your enemy. Well, loving your enemy doesn't mean that you become 
John and Mabel Dormat. True. And, but I, I and see Paul and loved I his enemies, too. Mm -hmm. But God help you if he got in the way. That's right. Look what he did to the Galatians. Well, you, you stupid Galatians. That, that's Paul. That's not me. You stupid Galatians. He did. Somebody else used that word yeah. stupid here tonight. I, I... But if I don't show whether an error... Then you're wrong. If the, right, I'm wrong. And if the trump on certain sound, mm -hmm. says Paul, mm -hmm. then how will you prepare yourself for battle? You see, the me methodology and the philosophy governing the Christians today in many areas is there is no battle. We are afraid that if we say anything, a lot of people are going to be upset. Well, let me illustrate what I mean. I just quoted Hunt. I can quote him again, but let me quote again something that he said that I think is worth saying. We know in the study of cults that Herbert W. Armstrong, the Mormons, Christian Science, Unity, and all the Hindu cults have a basic thesis that man is or can become a god. Every right. one of them. Right. Now, we know that. We know it's occultic, we know it's evil, and we know it's to be rejected. Mm -hmm. Isn't that right? Correct. Everybody agrees to that? Yes. All right, now, when Christians teach that doctrine, it is still just as evil. It is still just as wrong, and it must be spoken against, no matter who they are. From Billy Graham on down to you and me at the bottom of the totem pole, mm -hmm. if we're teaching false doctrine, which is exactly what the cults are doing, then we are subject to criticism. Well, it's like Paul said in Galatians 1, if and even if an angel from heaven come right. and preach any other gospel unto you, let him be accursed. Okay. Does That's exactly that? what you said. Then Paul listen said carefully. <clears throat> this is about Jesus Christ. Spiritually in separation from God. Spiritual death also means having Satan's nature. What is Satan's nature? John 8. He is a liar and a murderer from the beginning, and he abode not in the truth. Jesus defined his nature, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. And... So we don't throw them out because no, they made an improper no, statement. No, we love them. Right. What we do is we contact them, right? Uh-huh. And we say to them, hey, guys, this is wrong. And we give them the reasons, right? Mm-hmm. We did. Uh-huh. Nobody... Nobody takes any envelopes. Nobody takes any letters. Nobody takes certified mail asking these questions as brothers. Let's sit down and talk about this. You don't get anything. All you get is condemnation of anybody that criticizes. Well, the truth of the matter is, mm -hmm. listen carefully. The Mormons say you can become a god. When you become a new creature, your spirit is completely recreated. You need to realize that you are not a spiritual schizophrenic, half God and half Satan. You are all God. Sound familiar? Really? Kenneth Copeland, Believer's Voice, Victory, 382. You are all God. Now, I don't care who he is. I don't care who Graham is. I don't care who you or Crouch or Robertson or anybody else is or me. We are under authority to Holy Scripture. Mm -hmm. And if we are teaching this stuff, if we're teaching this stuff, we should, we should be corrected, and we should not do it anymore. It's for you. A lot of weirdos that freaked out, oh, Cleck said, said he's a fallen angel. Jesus said I was a fallen angel. Do not your own Scripture say, ye are gods, John 10.34. Psalm 82, you are Elohim. All of you are children of the Most High. Elion. Got it. I was talking to Kat today, and we're just talking about Grand Junction coming up. And, you know, we're talking about, you know, the name of the ministry is Before the Fire. And just, you know, we're just having this conversation about how supernatural, how impossible all this stuff is. And so Kat started talking about Second Kings 2, right? And she had asked me did, if I knew the part about where the kids were torn apart by a bear. And I was like, what? And guys, I know my Bible pretty well. And I was, and I was like, I was like, what? Kids torn apart by bears because they, they mocked Elisha after he had received his double portion of power once Elijah had been taken up. And I and I was telling Kat, I was like, wow, I don't I don't remember that 
in the Bible, which is really weird. You'd think I'd remember a story about a bunch of kids being mauled by bears. <laughs> you know, that's just like weird. So so Kat pulled it up and, and she started reading uh Second Kings two. Does that sound right? Yeah. Yes. Okay, so I'm gonna go to Second Kings where you were reading. And so we were at Second Kings two 23 and so here it is so here's the part that cal was talking about and I, she was reading this to me it says and he went up from thence it's talking about elisha so let's see so the waters were healed it's really fascinating it also means semen were healed unto this day according to the saying of elisha which he spake and he went up from thence unto bethel and he was going up by the way there came forth little children out of the city and mocked him and said unto him, Go up, thou bald head. Go up, thou bald head. And Kat and I were kind of cracking up. <laughs> I was kind of cracking up. And I was like, Oh, so a bunch of little kids come and mock me. You know, I was like, Just kidding around. And, and, and so this is the part of the Bible where these kids come up and they mock Elisha. And I, I, ne I never knew this scripture. It's so weird because I know. I know this scripture, uh, you know, when he receives his double portion. So anyway, here it is, 2 Kings 2.24. It says, And he turned back and looked on them and cursed them in the name of the Lord. And there came forth two she-bears out of the wood and tear 42 children of them. And so when you look it up, tear, it means to cleave, to rend, to rip open. So, okay, so... Kat, this is the story you were reading to me, correct? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yes. And so I was like, that's insane. And then out of nowhere, okay, so here's where, this is where things get serious, guys. This is no joke. So out of nowhere, I was like, oh, my gosh, my body started buzzing. Kat, did your body start buzzing? Yes. And I heard the Lord say, Jonathan, you will admonish anyone who wants to come to Grand Junction for the wrong reasons, that I will curse them. Okay, so out of an 800,000 word book, we prayed and said, Lord, if this is true, that I'm supposed to warn anyone that would even consider going to Grand Junction with malintent or evil intent in your heart, the Lord God himself will curse you forever. True or not true? And we we cast a lot. This is called casting a lot. And it said, forewarning, harbinger, herald, messenger. Malintent. You will suffer the curse of the Lord God. I guarantee it. So remember that. Yeah. If you choose to do that, remember, he will choose the curse for you. I guarantee it. And I mean, this came out of nowhere, right? I mean, I was like, what? What's going on? My old body's buzzing. Yeah. And the Lord's saying, anyone that shows up with malintent, he will curse. Just as, just as Elisha, Elisha cursed children that were being evil. And two bears came out of the wood and ripped open 42 children. Yeah. And the word tear means to rip open, to cleave, to rip open or breach, cleave asunder. So I am telling everybody, this is what I heard. I'm required by the Lord, by the Lord God to do what he tells me and give you fair warning. If you come with malintent, I don't have to do a thing. The Lord God will do it himself. It's on your own head if you come with malintent. Remember that. And you don't know what it's going to be. The Lord himself will decide what it's going to be if you do that. Okay. So then I heard the Lord say, and I want you to prophesy. So he's poured a prophetic utterance into me. And he told me when I give this prophetic utterance, he told me what to put on the screen while I prophesy what's coming. Okay. Now, remember, anyone that speaks against the Lord and his children against the Lord God and his children, this is for you. Okay, I'm just telling you, that's who this is for. And it, it, this covers the gamut, the entire world. It doesn't, I'm not talking about just some channel that made their videos. I could care less. They have to answer to the Lord. They don't have to answer to me. They have to answer to the one who enlisted me. So it's, that's all between you guys. Not has nothing to do with me. 
but I'm going to prophesy according to the Lord's will now. Okay, so now I'm going to go through this prophetic utterance that the Lord gave me. And this is not a Grand Junction thing. I've had this in part for weeks and weeks, but now it's time to, to speak these words. It's very serious stuff. And after after this, now I hear my spirit to do this, let it stand on its own, because I was going to do a three different parts right after this. But I hear my spirit no post this by itself. So I'm going to do what he says. Okay, so I was I was told to put this image on the screen. Again, this prophetic utterance now has nothing to do with Grand Junction. It has to do with the whole thing, the whole ministry, everything. And I mean, just all God's children and all those that go up against God's children. It has to do with all of it. So I'm going to do what he said. He said to put this image on the screen and to give a prophetic utterance. So here we go. <laughs> Okay, here we go. Thus saith the Lord God, Woe unto the false witnesses. They utter falsehoods from their own imaginations. I have not sent them. Therefore they will reap the reward of their own tongues, and by their own mouth shall they be consumed. They have spoken falsely against all my children, from the time of Abel to the day of slaughter. Therefore they will reap all they have sown, and shall reap the reward of their own tongue, and shall be consumed by their own mouth. Thus saith he that slayeth thee, your accusations are determined upon yourself, and your falsehoods shall fill the midst of thee. Your own death is your reward, and your horror is your own wage, paid from that which you serve. You have planted the seed of your own tongue, and the fruit is your reward. Hear the word of the Lord. Oh my gosh, I'm... no joke <laughs> I can feel it inside of me I can feel it no joke folks <laughs> it's no joke I feel so bad for all the people that have followed their own stupid ways I wish I could fix it for them but I can't off hell yeah I'm a fallen angel we're all fallen angels and we got linked up with a superhuman angel demon but whether they want to hear it or not the Lord always sends forth watchmen to warn. He always does. He never does anything till he warns. I am here to remind you that Paul the Apostle warned of the coming of another gospel which we have not preached. He said there is coming another gospel that's going to preach another Jesus. You'll hear his name. It'll sound sweet. 
But it's not the Jesus that I preach, Paul said. It's not the true Jesus. Paul goes on, or Paul was amazed. He said that you were so removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ to another gospel. Folks, listen to me. There is in the land right now with thousands of people sitting under another gospel, another Jesus, being preached by ministers who have lost the touch of God and been transformed into angels of light to comment to deceive, if possible, even the elect of God. Paul goes to warn the church, it's really not another gospel, but it's a perversion of the gospel of Christ, which is really not another, Paul said, but there be some that trouble you and pervert or change the gospel of Christ. He said, they're going to change it. They're going to accommodate the sinner. They're going to accommodate their pleasures. They're going to accommodate all of their needs. And they're going to design a gospel with their own Christ, with their own doctrine. And then this awful warning from Paul. But though we, or an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you, but that which we preached unto you, let him be accursed. Let him be accursed. Folks, I didn't say that. The Apostle Paul said it. And he said it's going to be dangerous because it's going to come from seemingly pious, sincere ministers. And I tremble when I hear Paul warn us that Satan's going to come right into the church disguised as an angel of light. He's going to infiltrate into the church with his own ministers. They'll come angel-like, he said, preaching a false gospel of righteousness. For such are false prophets, false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it's no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose ends will be according to their works. Paul said they're going to come and they're going to glory in the flesh. They're going to glory in their might their money, they're going to glory in their bigness, their numbers, and they're going to glory in the fact that they are so contemporary. They're going to glory in their acceptance by the world. Jesus warned, beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing. They're to come like gentle sheep, sincere, intelligent, bright, but said inward they're ravening wolves, and they're going to accommodate they're going to change the gospel to suit the needs of the people. Jesus puts his finger on the motives behind them. Ambition. The word ravening here, ravening wolves in the Greek means starve for recognition and, recognition and gratification. Men are going to rise, starve to make it. You see it in the business world. You see it on your job. People trying to climb the ladder and get recognition quickly. And folks, it's now in the ministry, full blown. Young men so ambitious to be one of the big boys, to have the biggest church, the biggest numbers, the biggest crowds. He said they're ravening wolves. I read Paul's warning in 2 Corinthians 11th chapter about ministers being transformed into angels of light who believe they're preaching righteousness, but they've been changed somehow into a tool of Satan. And I say, God, can that be possible? Lord, is that, is that really reasonable that a man who starts right can change and become a tool of the devil in the pulpit? Am I to conclude that a man of God can start right, be a true shepherd for a season, preach a true gospel, but something of hell lays hold of his heart and his spirit, something demonic, and he changes and he becomes a minister of Satan? Folks, it's happening every day. It's happening right here in New York City. It's not wrong to pray for growth, but if it's only to feed human ambition, it'll change the man into a devil. You see, Paul had lived his whole religious life under religious formulas. He saw he'd lived with these man-made schemes. He, he had seen teachings that accommodated the weaknesses and the sinfulness of backslidden Jews. He'd had his stomach full of it. He said, I have nothing to do with that. It attracts the multitudes, yes. But he said, one day Jesus came and revealed himself in me. And Paul put all of the formulas aside as dung, as garbage. Paul, by his own confession, said, I'm determined to go forth to fully preach the gospel of Christ in power and demonstration of the Holy Ghost. 
And unless the gospel is preached in power and demonstrates the Holy Ghost, it's not the gospel. It's not the gospel. And sadly, multitudes in America don't even know what the gospel is because they haven't heard it.